Hello and today we will be talking about how to install Ubuntu in a virtual machine. I know you are excited but there are some things to consider before you jump into it. The first thing that you should note is that you need a decent computer. Now here is a minimum spec that you should meet to virtualize Ubuntu. Then what you need is enable your system virtualization feature and by system I mean your motherboard. So this uh, process is different to every motherboard so uh, check your motherboard model number and google how to virtualize it or how to enable this feature in your motherboard uh, because without it you can't virtualize anything. Now if you have this covered uh, we are ready to install Ubuntu. There are two virtual machines that are really popular those are VirtualBox and VMware both of these are great. For this tutorial, however, we will use VirtualBox. Uh, let me know if you wanna see uh, VMBox, oops, I mean VMware. And as always, subscribe and leave a like. Let's get moving. Let's start by getting into a browser. Like every time, you need a browser to get the virtual machine. Now, if you already have this step down and you've done this, I will leave a timestamp so you can skip this step and go to the installation itself. Uh, now here is the link to the uh, VirtualBox download page and you can download VirtualBox from here. Now we are using Windows as the host machine so we need uh, this version right here which says Windows Host. Uh, there are other versions for other distros but we don't need those. Now click on this and it should start downloading. And this step is fairly automatic and just wait till it's done downloading and it should be ready to go. So after the downloading is over, now we can move on to the next step. And that next step is getting Ubuntu itself. Now as I said previously, if you have all of this down and you have every file ready, you can skip to this timestamp and just skip it. And now let's go to the Ubuntu official website and download it. You can go ubuntu.com that is their official website. So here we are and now we can hit to this download right here. And as you can see there is Ubuntu desktop server and there will be a bunch of other things. So we need this Ubuntu desktop so we will click on here and it should start downloading. Now this will give you an ISO file and if you are new to this ISO file thingy that <laughs> you should really know about this by now. But well, that out of the way, I have this downloaded, so I won't uh, annoy you by showing the download process. But uh, you can pause the video here if you want to uh, wait for it to download. So, well, after that out of the way, now our first step is installing the virtual machine. Now, uh, to install the virtual machine, what we can do is go to downloads then where you uh, kept downloaded the virtual box so uh, any directory that you have chosen while it was being downloaded so then uh, the setup process is fairly simple it's mostly like uh, how you would install any other software and <laughs> you basically just have to hit next uh, in case if you want to specify where you want to install it there is an option but uh, we will just go with the default one now if you finish, uh, this should automatically start VirtualBox and as you can see, we are in VirtualBox. So there is a lot of uh, things here. So what we need to do is configure the virtual machine to run Ubuntu. So when you are here, we need to create a virtual environment. So to create it, we have to click here, new and then name it. So virtual box has a, a cool feature where uh, when you name it, it by default uh, selects the type and the uh, version. So we don't have to worry about it. Uh, and if you want to uh, move it, then you probably should because uh, you need at least 40 gigabytes of free space uh, or else you will uh, run out of space very quickly. 
and <laughs> well this will allocate the space uh, when it's needed so it is very good for uh, if you are trying Linux for the first time or if you are trying it out without dual booting it so this is a very good thing now we need to specify how much RAM we get so I would not recommend going over the green line I would recommend staying in it and a minimum of 4 gigabytes is recommended because well <laughs> you don't want your Ubuntu machine to be running out of RAM and now we have create a virtual disk so what this does is creates a virtual environment in our disk and we need the format VHD which stands for virtual hard disk so it's in the name it is just a virtual disk that is uh, split from your uh, main hard disk or your SSD and used as a uh, almost like a separate machine but and you want dynamic allocated well if you are trying to, wanting to use it for a long time and you will be installing a bunch of software so dynamic allocated allows you for uh, increasing your storage or decreasing it in case you need it so that's a neat feature and then after you are done here we can move on and go to the next step so in the next step we need to specify how much storage we are want to give this server I mean this virtual machine so I would recommend 40 gigabytes because that's enough to run Ubuntu and most of its software uh, but if you are willing to or if you want to use more heavier software then you can go higher it's up to you but don't go lower than recommended so now we have a virtual environment now what do we do with this virtual environment so the first thing we need to do is configure the virtual environment so we can uh, run Ubuntu on it so the first thing that you we would go in settings is hit the general tab and go to advanced and change these two options so what this does is it makes sure that your clipboard is shared between the virtual machine because uh, well if you know virtual machine is basically just running a software in your existing machine or in an existing OS and simulating another operating system so now uh, we can go to system and assign how much process now you can change the RAM if you want and here is the processor now uh, at minimum dual core is recommended because well it helps the machine run a bit stable but as always do not go over the red line you can go over it but just don't go over it now i will give it giving it six cores maybe uh, four four cores six cores is better now nah, four cores is okay so it just depends on you now i am record recording this so i am keeping some cores for my uh, obs or you know how things get in here there is a lot of extra things which you mostly don't need just because uh, now here you can see it is uh, video memory now this video memory depends on how much uh, graphics memory you have so if you have a dedicated graphics card you would have much more now here you can specify how many monitors you want to use so I have two monitors but I would use one just for now so you can go two, three, four, or higher. As you can see, if I go higher, you will see more uh, VRAM is needed. So two is, uh, for now, I'll go one. You can go higher if you need it, but uh, two is just fine. So one is just fine. Now, after you have configured this, now we need to go to the main part. This is storage, or this is specifies what will be booting into this virtual environment so in here we need to get here and then specify the ISO that you, we want to run so this is basically a pen drive for now then we can select here and then choose a disk so now we can choose a disk image file which is basically just an ISO file so as you can see here there is specified ISO so now I just have to find where I put the ISO and well here it is with a bunch of other things. So now after we open this now as you can see this will now load that ISO 
and if you know this ISO files are basically installation files that you can use to install <laughs> OS. Now all these other things are mm, basically you don't have to touch them they are configured by default. Now if we if you have issues with these then uh, you can uh, fiddle around or google some stuff but in most cases you don't need to change this thing because if you are just an average user this should be just fine but there is the option you can configure network but uh, well i'll show you because ubuntu has its own uh, virtual ethernet so it emulates another so as i said it's basically just a simulating another machine so it has its own virtual ethernet and don't worry you won't get much of a bottleneck from it your internet should be to speed so now you just have to start the machine so this is equivalent of booting your machine up so uh, it should boot now and as you can see uh, it is going through the standard ubuntu installation so now that ubuntu is booting up now we just have to wait for it to boot up then we can continue on with the installation process so here i am going on full screen and this is the key if you want to go full screen and well it got to full screen so you can install it in a small which we will do later because i don't know why but uh, my copy of installation is uh, kind of broken and it does not like full screen very much so as you can see it's still small and well i actually didn't know how to fix this or i didn't quite understand what happened because it usually just works but anyway uh, it is working so what the heck so now we'll install ubuntu and if you want to try ubuntu out you can select the option which says try ubuntu and in here uh, as you can see it is the keyboard layout and well you will choose your keyboard layout which you need for your keyboard it's usually english us and you usually do not need to change this but if you do then you need to i am trying to fix this uh, little window and let me see if i can uh, make it a little bit bigger maybe not because it's not it does not seem to compromise oh, sorry cooperate but that's not much of an issue because we are in the installation phase and i know for sure that ubuntu uh, can be resized after installation and well it may be working in your machine who knows maybe it's just an issue that i have but well let's just continue and now here you can see there are two types of installation normal installation and minimal installation so the normal installation will install everything like every utility that ubuntu has but in minimal installation you can build ubuntu up from the ground up now if you are a kind of guy that needs everything or most things and the set up for you and you know you have most of the utilities so i would recommend going with the normal install but if you want to build your Ubuntu from the ground up, the minimal install is the way to go. Now you can install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, but we won't select that. Let's just continue and give it a second and it should go on to the next step. Now you should be able to follow along because I am not fast forwarding anything. And here you just you can just select this erase this and install Ubuntu just because we are using a virtual machine and we will be using the entire hard, virtual hard drive as the uh, well how do I put this well <laughs> as the place where Ubuntu lives so just hit continue and you should be fine. Now this will take a bit of time depending on your storage type so if you are using an ssd it should be much faster but i am using a hard disk because well i have a bigger hard disk so there you go so now you just have to choose your location then name and user now remember this is very important because you need to remember your username or you can't log in now i'll just choose a username and 
then this is the part you have to remember <laughs> then you need a password so make sure to select a password that you are satisfied with and you can remember so there we go and then you can select to log in automatically or you can just set it to require a password so i'll set it to log in automatically uh, maybe requiring password is not that bad but you can choose between them if you really need then you just hit continue and it should start installing ubuntu in your machine now this will take a bit so as i said this will depend on your storage type and how fast it is so let's just wait and continue after this is done So now the installation is done and we are ready to restart. So after you see this, you just have to restart and you should have it installed Ubuntu machine in your virtual machine. So after you hit restart, it should reboot the virtual machine and you should be booted into a fresh install of Ubuntu. So let's just wait and now as you can see this is saying uh, please remove the installation media and please uh, enter so we will just click enter because well we do not have a installation media so after we hit enter we just have to wait for a bit and it should start to boot ubuntu now there we go we are in the login phase so now if I click on this, this is my user and so here I just have to type my password and then hit enter and you should be logged in to your machine. Now I just have to fix this weird small thing and uh, this should be fixable by changing the resolution. Now. I don't know why this is doing this to me but uh, usually it's really easy but then after we do this uh, this is just a basic setup and these are the software for getting you started now let me just fix this uh, display thing let's go to settings hold up <laughs> there is a display option I forgot. now yeah I need this one help where the heck is this yeah i think i should quit uh quit full screen mode i don't know why this happened it usually does not happen but well what the heck now i just have to figure out what to do what it just fixed itself i don't know what i did but it just fixed itself now we just have to change this resolution so uh, this is my resolution and then hit apply and there we go now <laughs> finally we have a full screen Ubuntu I don't know what happened if you also have this issue please let me know uh, or if I am just stupid or if I am just dumb and don't know what's happening so yeah that's all for installing Ubuntu in a virtual machine uh, you can explore here and if you're very new to this and uh, getting scared of the issues well that comes with linux and uh, well you won't get it every time it's uh, mostly like how you're doing things and maybe there were some issues made by me so uh, just so you know it's fairly simple now you can do well i am doing an epi tablet just to check if my internet is working and well it seems it's working it's taking a bit of time but well my internet is working so that's a good thing and if you like this video hit hit that like button and leave a comment if you know why these issues happened and if there are ways how it is fixable and uh, like always subscribe leave a like and see you guys on the next one